1974, seeing potential for the X-Men outside of the United States, Marvel Comics devised plans to revamp the series with a new international cast of mutants, a task which ultimately fell to new co-editor-in-chief and writer Lynn Wein. Perhaps working towards that goal, Wein and artist Herb Trimp debuted Canada's Weapon X, complete with John Romita designed costume in 1974's The Incredible Hulk, number 180. With Wien and Cockrum taking the reins of the revamp, giant-sized X-Men number one, renamed Weapon X as Wolverine, revealed as a mutant, he was fitted with a new stylist when cover artist Gil Kane drew his mask off model. Cockrum dug the change, however, and probably in an effort to keep the character recognizable, doubled down on the shape for Logan's hair. Taking over X-Men from Wien, Writer Chris Claremont worked to clarify the concept of Wolverine's adamantium claws and skeleton, named the character Logan, and firmly established a rivalry with Cyclops, was mostly driven by his hots, yeah I hate me too, for Jean Grey. Claremont, however, grew bored by Wolverine and was set to drop him from the series, until Canadian and new series artist John Byrne insisted that Logan stay put. Leaning into Logan's murky past and shit memory, Claremont and Byrne planted the seeds of Logan's near immortality and devised a sprawling, secret, and conspiratorial character history, much of which, such as the idea that Logan has only ever fought clones of his arch nemesis and secret father Sabretooth, never became anything tangible. On his way out the door, Byrne designed the superior brown suit that Logan rocked throughout the 80s, to this day, second only to that Letterkenny lumberjack shirt. Fight me, Wayne. Not long thereafter, Wolverine's solo miniseries by Claremont with co-plotter and artist Frank Miller established Logan's appropriation, adoption, let's go with connection, to Japan and the codes of the samurai, which has served ever since as this ridiculous man's most reasonable form of therapy. The second miniseries by Claremont now Milgram established Logan's mentorship of Kitty Pride, the first of several important surrogate little sisters and daughters. Arguably, the last major piece to the Wolverine as cultural icon puzzle came with writer-artist Barry Windsor Smith's Amazing Weapon X. First serialized in 1991's Marvel Comics Presents, it revisits and drives home the tragedy of Logan's time as a science experiment and cements his celebration of a pants-free lifestyle. There are of course other stories, like moving to Madripoor and wearing an eye patch like Clark Kent glasses, and that stupid time he died. But much like Wolverine, I can't remember what's real and what's a bad dream. We'll do what we can to claw the truth out of the recesses of our minds another time.